Real quick before we jump into this video, I just want to let you guys know, if you have not already heard, I am giving away my beautiful 2005 Chevy 2500 HD to one of you guys. All you have to do is go over to workforwardapparel.com. Every $5 spent gets you entered to win this absolute beautiful truck. Full complete paint job on her, custom powder coated wheels, flawless interior. You do not want to miss out on this giveaway. Workforwardapparel.com, let's roll to this video. What's up and good morning guys. Welcome back to another video. Clearly, uh, you know, wearing a sweatshirt, got the hood on. That's because it is a brisk fall morning here, all of us uh, 75 degrees. Oh man, somebody ran over my cone. So anyways, the long awaited Rhino Ranch entrance project. We are back today. We are back and ready to get going on this thing. A lot of you guys have been leaving comments on pretty much every video that I post saying, when are we getting back on this project? Well, here we are. Um, and obviously, I think I mentioned in my last video, these things take a lot of time and they take a lot of money. And all this stuff gets done kind of when we don't have other stuff going on. So that's why this project was on hold. And it really does, uh, you know, burn through the old bank account pretty quick doing this stuff. So sometimes you gotta take a break, build up a little bit more money, and then uh, jump back at it. We did have um, some flash floods come through here the other day and shout out to James um, we were out of town in Utah for uh, giving me the heads up number one and asking if there's anything that needs to be done at the house to kind of get ready for a flood clearly though you guys can see all of the water came rushing through here which this is what I wanted to see before I started doing a lot of improvements on the properties I want to see how the property handles water and if you look at our what was gravel driveway you can see all the gravel has washed away a bunch of dirt has kind of washed up over top of it. And we're talking like a ton of rain that happened very, very quickly. So if you've kind of followed the trail of water here, you'll see it has filled in all of our electrical trenches with like this mulch, which I'm assuming is just all the crap that has come off the trees. So what was some deep trenches is now just completely full of mulch that we're gonna have to clean out because that will not compact. So the plan today is, uh, well, Abel's getting our temporary water set up over there. And then we're going to be backfilling this thing, which is the next giant step here because you'll see a giant height difference in columns there. And the reason is this whole property slopes down this way. I don't want my gates or the underneath of the gates to be sloped like that with concrete. And you see like no gap on the gate on that side. And then this side has like a two foot gap underneath it. Not my style. I want things to look nice and level. If you've been following along, you remember we went around and marked basically the top of concrete which you can see we got to bring this dirt up pretty substantially we're going to be about six inches down below so it'll be close to that grout joint right there that'll allow us to bring in two inches of dg or decomposed granite and then we'll have four inches of concrete so we got to bring the dirt to about up to there today and obviously as we go that way it's less and less because it kind of zeroes out at that column now i don't have a ton of dirt out here we've got this pile right here which is a decent amount and then I've got another good sized pile sitting over there. And the good thing about the rain is it totally soaked this entire property, which means like all of this stuff is very well compacted. Ooh, I think we exposed a rock right there. Everything out here got super, super wet. So it's gonna make compaction really good today. What's up donkeys, you guys ready to come to work? You seem like you're waiting at the gate here. Now I need to open this fence, but I know if I do, you guys are gonna leave. In order to move all this dirt today, um, James is gracious enough to kind of lend me a bunch of his equipment, which is awesome. I believe we're gonna be using the big wheel loader. He unfortunately doesn't have any tracked skid steers over there, so we're going to be taking one of the wheeled skid steers, and then we're probably going to be using his roller as well to compact this, which is cool, because I haven't really operated one of those much. Bowles, what are you doing, buddy? You just, okay, you, I mean, I know you fit through that, but you just trying to make it rub it in the donkey's face? Supervising, making sure everything's good? My partner, my partner. Your partner? <laughs> now, if you guys haven't been following along on James's channel, he's got a lot of cool stuff going on in his property, so make sure you guys check it out. And the granddaddy of granddaddy of equipment there, and I just talked to James. Um, unfortunately, the skid steer that he's got here, it's got a flat tire on it. So his brother's on his way to hopefully get that fixed. In the meantime, we're going to use the wheel loader because we got to bring the material over in bulk anyway. I'm very excited anytime we get to play with this thing. All righty. Use my cat key that James gave to me. Thank you, James. And I got to give a huge shout out to James for trusting me in his equipment. Not only his skid steers and all that stuff, but the big daddy here. If you guys don't know what these things cost, look it up. These things are not cheap. And for him to, number one, be out of town, but trust me to just come over here and grab it. Now, we're kind of walled in here. We've got a trench running that way, a trench running that way. We've got a tiny little opening right there in between hitting whatever that pipe is. 
but then there's also a fence right there. And if you guys have ever driven these like center articulating loaders, it's a little different. All right, here goes nothing. Let's see if we can uh, squeeze her out over here. We don't want any broken pipes or any broken new trees. I think we're gonna make it guys, I think we're gonna make it. Tight squeeze, missing the fence. We got it. All right, this cool fall morning is getting a little warm. We better uh, kick the AC on here. All right, now we gotta put a game plan together because I don't wanna grab from that pile and have to drive all the way around to the end of the driveway to cut back in, but there's no way we're gonna fit through this little opening here. See how wet this dirt really is. We're going for big scoops, gotta make it count. I'm really contemplating just blowing a hole right here through this fence because we don't really need it. This fence is all gonna go at some point very soon. We'll see by like trip number three if I'm over it and we just use this to tear the fence down. I mean, the good news is this thing actually goes fast and the ride is really nice. Abel's already got the gate open for us. Let's get our first scoop in here. Now we might have to take off a limb of this tree today because I don't want to be scratching up James's loader. We're gonna dodge that branch right there. And well, there goes nothing. I think we'll be good if we just take out two posts, so essentially three panels. Should be enough to swing and make a little little S turn there, I think. Oh yeah, they, they screwed these on. All right, these look pretty worn through, so we're just gonna use the old work dudes here. Oh, that one's a little stiff. Still a little stiff. There we go. Okay, that lower one, that, that kind of hurt. We're gonna, we're gonna donkey kink this one. I learned this trick from Willie. There we go. As long as we take off these two outer sides, the wheel loader should be able to grab these posts and pull them out. Oh, that one's firm. Got an idea. Smarter, not harder. All right. There we go. We're just gonna put a little pressure on this one with the wheel loader. We're gonna get the scaffolding moved here. We could dodge this branch. Really need to cut this thing down. Now, granted, the driveway is only gonna go to, we're not really sure. We're either gonna split the column with the concrete, we're gonna go to the edge of the column, or we're gonna go to that edge. Regardless, we need to run the dirt way past where the actual edge of the concrete is. Now we've hopped off the wheel loader. Um, I'm gonna grab the mini X right there. But first we gotta let our girls out. Well, hello, you little chubby goats now. You guys are getting big. You guys know you ain't supposed to eat the bird food. That's all you guys wanna do. Get out of here, get out of here. 
I know, you, you gotta you gotta get your head out. So right now, um, the reason I brought the Mini X down here is to like fine grade everything, and I know it drives everybody crazy that I like to fine grade with a Mini X, but I just do, it's easier, it's more precise. Um, obviously, this big old monster is not quite um, the right tool to get in here and fine grade. In fact, I've never really tried to grade with one of these, so just that little bit of back dragging right there, it can get a little bit tricky with these monsters. But I think having the old uh, wheel loader here, like. It kind of did the bulk of the work that we needed the skid steer for and we can really come in and fine grade with the Mini X. Now I do wish I had a, uh, a grading bucket or a smooth bucket for the Mini X. Last time I went to Bobcat it's like a six to eight month wait and they want a million dollars for the thing. So I might just make a bar that bolts onto the front there like a big old piece of like I don't even know quarter inch by six inch four inch whatever so we have a grading bar on the front of that bucket see with our line right here we want to be six inches below this pink line so i don't know if you can see that good on camera that's top of concrete which goes to our line over there on the block so six inches below that's going to leave four inches for concrete and two inches for dg to actually come in and fine grade it. down there we did um six inches of concrete we're going to transition to four inches here there's just no need i mean i ended up spending a ton of money down here and this is where it's gonna take like the grunt of people coming off the road and transitions and all that stuff. Once you're up on the concrete, your vehicle's not doing weird stuff. I don't even know if that makes sense, but I also don't wanna spend a million dollars in concrete going all the way up to the house. So I think this is gonna be our transition point um, to four inch and then the whole driveway going to the house is all gonna be four inches thick. guys she's starting to actually look like something here you'll see that our columns are about the same height going all the way across now there's a little valley right here that we'll kind of have to feather in once we figure out exactly where our height is over here kind of like we did the approach that I'm sitting on right now I'm gonna rough grade it a time or six until I get to where I feel like it feels right right now having like 42 string lines running across while trying to run equipment across is no fun so We've got that string line, that string line, and then we had one crossing right there. But I've tracked over it quite a few times here. Um, seems like she's tightening it up really good. Now, I'm doing a couple things I don't really recommend, one of which is backfilling against um, block work that hasn't been grouted or filled with concrete. Granted, we're not putting a lot of pressure against it, and they're four foot by four foot columns. I think everything's pretty well locked in. If this is like a flat wall, definitely would not recommend doing this. The other thing is like we've kind of gone in a pretty big lift here versus like bringing it up, you know, eight to 10 inches at a time. But I think having the wheel loader, um, even though I'm sure on those tires, it's not a ton of PSI on the down pressure, but I think having the wheel loader running over it with the Mini X and then going to get the roller right now, um, I think we're gonna be pretty well compacted. This stuff tightens up really, really well. Now I was a little worried that you're gonna see kind of the, the approach I'm standing on tilted this way a little bit, then it's gonna level back out as you get to the next pour that we're gonna do. But I think standing right here looking at it, I don't think it's going to look that bad. I think it's actually going to be kind of cool. Um, you can kind of see what I'm talking about right now where this edge of the concrete slopes down, but up there we're going to go level. We should have raised this up. I'm not the king of like planning 42 steps ahead as you guys know from my videos, but 
we didn't really plan on the gray change being super crazy at the gate but i'd rather have the gates all level all the way across and underneath than have everything sloped to kind of match the slope of the street plus i think if we brought this side up higher we definitely would have been fighting uh, my trailer more coming in and out of the driveway y'all here is our uh next toy we're taking over again shout out to james now is this the ideal dirt compaction machine here no better than nothing so we'll give it a shot here and see if it does pretty good obviously with the smooth drum um it's not really one of the off-road ones that have like the actual typically called a sheep's foot where they actually have all the big knobs on the thing so it'll actually like pound into the dirt but it is vibratory drum front and rear so we should be good we'll give it a shot we'll see what happens now i've never really operated one of these um i played with the off-road ones a little bit but not one of these street ones now this is also going to be real fun on the washboard road going back to my house because there is zero suspension on these things now to operate these things um this is your forward and reverse there are no pedals for anything so I'll take a parking brake off here there we go all right You can see they don't like to turn real well when they just slip, which they're gonna slip on this stuff. These are meant for asphalt. Oh, this is gonna be a bumpy ride. I feel like I need a kidney belt. So you can also turn on the drum vibrating, which is, uh, hold on, front. Front and rear, I'm assuming, maybe. I don't know what that one means right there. And I believe that button. Oh, geez. Whoa. This thing gonna vibrate itself to pieces. On the road again. I just can't wait to hit the washboard road again. Well, she did about what I expected it would do. Obviously without having those big old sheep's foot or claws to dig into the dirt, you're just gonna get a nice kind of smooth surface versus really jamming her in there. But this thing's compacted, again, pretty well. And we had the wheel loader on it. We had the mini X on it. Um, we are obviously gonna push this dirt way back once we, uh, before we ever get any concrete in here, as well as all these columns and everything will be grouted. So we'll run the jumping jack up around these columns. Um, I don't wanna get that thing too close and vibrate and these things start to move or anything weird happens with before they're grounded solid with concrete. Unfortunately, dirt wise though, you can see we need a ton more dirt because we've eaten up pretty much that whole pile. We've eaten up that whole pile and we wanna go probably 10 foot past where the concrete's gonna end. Oh, what's up guys? You guys know it's the end of the day. You guys coming running over. Oh, we got all the baby goats. We got bubbles, of course, Willie. What's up girls? Well, we kicked butt today, guys. Um, we got this side essentially all, we're gonna call it rough grade. This is with like plus or minus 
half inch to an inch here. Um, but this is the base grade. Then we're gonna come in with our clean DG and get our grade like totally, totally spot on. I ran over it with the roller one or two more times here. Um, probably gonna end up running over it with the skid steer to really make sure everything is compacted as can be. But so far, I'm pretty happy with it. This again shows you guys kind of our new grade and this is essentially this is the exact slope that it's going to be so even though you know it's obviously lower than the concrete right now by the time we pour the concrete it's going to match that exact slope so i think it's not too harsh i don't think it stands out too much i think it looks awesome so we'll be back on this thing first thing in the morning see you guys in the morning all right y'all well we are starting off this morning with uh having to chase donkeys over here out of Bubbles the Goat's pen. Apparently, uh, one of our ranch hands left it open this morning, and it's never a good idea, because the donkeys always find their way in here and love to eat everything that's in here. Come on, let's go, come on. Nobody kick me, let's go. Yep, we gotta go that way, let's go. I know, everybody chill, there we go, yep. Single file, single file. You know, they say goats are mischievous, but donkeys, so far from my experience, 10 times more mischievous than goats. Anytime we're back feeling, guys, I get happy. I don't know what the heck that is. That means we're like going a step in the right direction. I'll throw a little bit of dirt on top of the conduit here. And then we'll throw basically our flag over top so we know if we're ever digging in this area again. There is electrical conduit down below. I apologize for the dirty windshield. Hopefully you guys can see what's going on. All right, well we've got this part of the trench pretty much backfilled. Now before we go further into here, we're gonna start pulling this fence apart, moving it out probably to about the other side of that tree right there to buy us another, I don't know what that is, 15 or so feet. Because again, we gotta bring this dirt way out here. We got one fence panel over there. There's another one lying down over in the field over there. So that'll help us kind of extend our temporary fencing. All this corral fencing has been an awesome temporary fencing for this whole project. Otherwise, uh, yeah, we'd have a nightmare trying to keep the animals from getting out to the road. But that being said, we gotta move all this rebar, all of our scaffolding planks, that pallet, uh, that's gonna be fun to move. We'll figure out how to move that without a skid steer. All right, we're gonna try and pick up this whole stack of rebar here. Let's take this one slow and steady. Don't wanna slap the crap out of the excavator with all that rebar right there. I'm telling you guys, one of the most versatile tools you can ever have on a job site is an excavator. Don't care what anybody says on how skid steers are better. Granted, both of them are like, that's the perfect combo, but if I had to pick one, a mini X. Not that a skid steer couldn't do the exact same thing. All right, so we're just gonna set these up out of the way for now until we figure out where our fencing's gonna go and those will end up somewhere back up against the fence. Stop in, see. This day maybe one of the most huh? Well, we made pretty uh pretty quick work there, getting that fence moved and getting everything all cleaned up over here. So next step is gonna keep back filling up to about where that column is, get all this done. I can hear James right now um, getting the dirt and stuff loaded up for us, so we should be getting that any second here. And then we're gonna start bringing this whole grade all the way out to, I don't even really know, probably about here at some point, just to get that concrete pour in. Then we'll kind of figure out where we're gonna take it from there. Either it's gonna have to like gradually slope back down, or I don't have my laser out here, but there's a chance that like that height right there corresponds to something over here. And at that point we can just really feather it out to where like, you don't even see that there's a grade change anywhere in there. Don't know until we get a laser on it. So for now, we're just gonna come back probably 10, 15 feet, depending on how much dirt we get right now. And remember on that side, we actually gotta take some dirt out. So we'll actually use some of that dirt as well. Um, it's not a lot, but you know, stuff adds up pretty quick. Oh, ho, ho, look at this special delivery we got. And then can I grab that skid steer from you? Can I ride back with you? Okay. What uh? What do we charge for Uber construction? It's a heck of a ride. Uber Gold? Is there an Uber Gold? Uh, I don't know. This is probably the most expensive Uber vehicle. Twenty bucks. Twenty bucks? Yeah. Deal. 
It looks like this one's seen a little better days. Dude, this, this is the, the abused stepchild of the fleet. Jeez. I mean, she's had a rough life. <laughs> Been on her side. Oh, this is the one that was... Front door broke, tires are like Swiss cheese. All right, guys, so we're gonna take a skid steer over today. Again, James is like a giant pivotal part of anything getting done over at my house, being that he has all of the right equipment. So this is gonna ease us today a little bit and uh, get some dirt moved, especially if we're gonna be scraping out dirt on the other side, the actual entrance gate side. All right, now we got a good system going here. James just bringing us scoops over with the wheel loader. Got the skid steer here now. It's gonna help kind of bring this stuff around. We're gonna do this in lifts, so I'm gonna actually take this pile down to about, I don't know, 10 inches or so. That way we know we got good compaction. Probably a little better compaction than we had the other day um, when I was just kind of doing it in mass. Now the good thing about having no front door is uh, you guys get a perfectly clear view instead of having a dusty window. We'll see how much Abel sprays me. And because we have it, let's use the old roller here. Especially now since we're doing smaller lifts, um, we're only compacting about that much-ish at a time. This thing ought to be ideal. See if she can get underneath her. Trees are amazing how strong they are. I don't know what this thing weighs, 20, 30,000 pounds. Well, that made easy work of that. We used the Mini X to clean up the last little bit. Alrighty, well, this backside here is pretty much done. Um, this is all leveled out. Obviously, there's a slope coming down right here. This area is not gonna be in the next pour. The next pour that we're doing is gonna be up into probably about the front of the columns there. So. Again, all this was was just to make sure that the dirt never washes away from underneath the concrete until we get all of this stuff poured. Now, good news is, I uh, we have the laser out here now. So we ended up shooting that height right there, which is our highest point of the driveway, which you can see it slopes down again. We're probably about 20 or so inches to about that spot right there. And I was kind of hoping, but wasn't really sure because it's hard to tell in places like this where it's so big and the grade changes so much, that that point would zero out somewhere along the driveway. Because I know the house is up higher um, especially considering like everything on this property kind of drains frontward. So we shot that point right there and basically came out level and it ends up being that zeroes out right where that tree is. So we really only have to fill just a little bit in here. Um, and obviously it's gradually less and less as we go this way. So I think about center point right here, we need to bring it up just about a foot. And the cool thing about doing that, obviously we could slope it down, but I want you to never really feel that grade change when you're driving out here. So in keeping everything nice and level and flowy, you're not gonna notice that you go up the driveway, then you go back down to go to the street. I don't like stuff like that. I want it to all just flow nice and evenly. So there's gonna be a decent amount more dirt we're gonna have to bring in, um, especially considering this side, we're not really gonna put a retaining wall or anything. We're just gonna let the dirt kind of taper out. We'll see what happens. But right now, we're gonna jump on the Mini X again. We're going to backfill a little bit over there. We're gonna dig another trench, tying into this trench to get our water and our electrical out past that way. This one we're gonna worry about later. We're not worried about it right now. Um, but considering this side's already kind of open, 
figure might as well just continue this one before we start really filling this whole side in. Now all this is going to be for again is uh, a sprinkler line and then a low voltage lighting line. So I'm not going too deep with it. I'm not real worried about it. The driveway is going to be over top. So is what it is. All these acres are right where we want to dig. It's where we find all the concrete. Just add that to our pile over there. Well, I don't know if you guys can see it here, but we were told this rain was coming later tonight, but clearly it is uh, starting to come down right now. Well, actually, it looks pretty good right there. I think we're going to get it heavy here in a second, which honestly, on a hot day like today when we're working, it ain't a bad thing. You know? Don't hate it. it definitely keeps the dust down. Now, while we wait for this rain to clear up, we'll grab this tree here. I don't think it'll be too heavy for the Mini X here. Oh, yeah. Easy day. And for right now, we're just gonna stockpile this. Oh, 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 okay, okay. Well, we, we take the whole fence down first. Then we're just gonna stockpile that right there. Let's see if we can pick this fence up here. Okay. Hey, we, we put a little bend in her, but we got her back up. Well, that rain lasted all of, I don't know, 45 seconds there? So. <laughs> We're gonna jump back in the skid steer. I'm gonna take this pile of dirt and essentially kind of do what we did over there. We're just gonna kind of slope this away. Again, we're trying to build this edge up. That way we have plenty of space between where the concrete's gonna be and where that actual edge drops off. Cause again, water comes through here pretty quickly. You don't ever wanna undermine the concrete. Otherwise it'll lay down. And when things lay down, that's when you get big cracks and all kinds of weird stuff happen. Now I was kind of hoping the rain would stay raining other than this being now an open cab cause uh, eliminate somebody having to be out there watering. So let's get this little embankment kind of built. See how it goes. Using what dirt we have extra. Granted again, there's gonna be some dirt coming out of that side once we scrape all that to where it needs to be grade wise. Fill in this hole where the tree was first so we can actually drive around it, not fall in. Gotta scare the donkeys away. They're getting a little close to all the open fencing. Look. So yeah. All right, we're gonna take a little break here real quick. We're gonna throw this fence back up because as soon as those guys all get out and they have all gotten out before, it is not fun to chase seven donkeys down the street and try and get them back into the yard. Well, crisis averted. We got the uh, fence up just in time to keep all the donkeys and everything from running out. Abel's got our sprinkler line and our low voltage line in. He already started kind of backfilling a little bit. We got it just stubbed up right there just so we know where it's at. Now the trench is all backfilled over here. Now for the fun part, well, we got to go kick Papa Rye now. He's out here on the old Mini X cleaning out the drainage as well that goes along the side of the road there because, well, if we got another big rainstorm coming. It's no fun when that thing's clogged up. If you guys remember from earlier in this video, I told you that this side needs to come down essentially six inches below that mark right there. And that'll be level all the way across. So basically the height that you see over there is six inches below that mark right there. We're gonna jump on the Mini X as soon as we can flag Papa Rhino down and get it over here. And I'm gonna start scraping all of this out. We're gonna take all the extra dirt and we're gonna continue to kind of build up our little uh, hillside edge, whatever we're gonna call this bluff. I don't know. Um, so far it's looking pretty good though over here, but we wanna continue this out as far past the concrete as we can. It's gonna end up being a planter or something by the time we're done. Things are really starting to shape up now. And you guys can kind of see the whole master plan here of why those columns were so much taller because at the end of the day, height wise, everything was done level, but the grade was so out of level that it looked like this column was gonna end up being a monster, which it was until we actually bring the grade up. So right now, all the columns are essentially sitting um, at the same height above the ground, sands taking out six inches from that one. All right, well, looks like Papa Rano's doing a great job over here. We do have uh, the existing pipe, if you guys remember, that ran underneath the old driveway entrance here. And then we tied it into our bigger 12-inch pipe that's running all the way up underneath the new concrete, which, well, I'd show you right now, but it's pretty buried in pine needles. The old one tends to get a little clogged over here at the entrance of it because all of the brush and stuff just kind of washes down and it's such a small opening right there that uh, gets clogged very easily. <laughs>
this video and today guys i think we got pretty much all the rough grading done which this place is this place is starting to look really really rad you're starting to get a real good idea of what this is going to look like finished once it has all the concrete in it a little bit more work here we'll be back tomorrow running uh drains and more conduit and more sprinkler lines and yada 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 it never ends um, but trying to think of everything we need now it's a lot harder to add stuff once there's concrete in place you don't want to do that so even if we're going to end up putting a little extra it's definitely worth putting a couple extra pieces of conduit a couple extra pieces of sprinkler line just in case we ever end up needing to use them later on down the road but with that we're going to wrap up as always thank you guys so much for watching if you're not subscribed already please click the subscribe button now that you do not miss out on any future content don't forget to give this video a like aka a thumbs up don't forget to check out workforapparel.com because if there's anything you want in this life you gotta be willing to work for it you guys are the best i'm out damn uh. Yeah. Uh. Yeah. Uh.